Today, I am going to test the Orter Laser Master 2 Pro. This is one of the more popular high-performance laser engravers on the market. I am going to put it to the test to see how it performs at laser engraving and laser cutting plywood, hardwood, and acrylic, and even stainless steel. I am also going to test how it engraves anodized aluminium, measure its laser spot size and compare all the results to other machines I have tested previously, especially the ever more popular Sculptfun S9. This machine also features some special functions that other machines don't have. I am going to test if these features are any good or not. The laser head is tightened by a thumb screw from the side. The machine has a nice belt tensioner, and it has limit switches which should come in very handy. You can also get an offline controller for controlling machine without computer. The machine has a fire alarm and an emergency stop switch. The fire alarm uses this sensor for detecting if the material has caught fire. Here is the machine next to the Sculptfun S9 and the Atomstack A5 Pro. Here you can see how much smaller the laser diode is compared to the Sculptfun S9. Therefore this machine can move faster, but at the expense of shorter lifespan of the laser head because the diode would heat up more. The one thing that bothers me is that the cable chain extends far behind the machine and together with the forward pointing USB and power connectors, the whole machine becomes very long and does not fit properly in my laser box. You would need a ventilation box that is almost 80 centimeters deep. First let's make an alignment test to see if the machine can start engraving on the same exact position multiple times in a row. I start by engraving a word on a small piece of wood, then I manually move the laser head away and calibrate home position again. Then, I engrave the same thing two more times to see if the lines align. This process can't be done with machines without limit switches and comes useful when making engravings in multiple operations. The alignment is perfect. Let's test how well does the emergency switch work. It is a bit cheap and fiddly, but it enables you to quickly stop the machine in case of emergency. The fire alarm also works well, but it often caused me false alarms in the middle of work. First, we are going to do the standard engraving test on poplar plywood. The plywood often comes a little warped, but I use a 2mm steel plate under my laser so the wooden boards can be easily held down with magnets. The thing that bothers me with this machine is the fact that the light shield is positioned quite high and a lot of reflected light is scattered around the machine. Wearing safety goggles is very recommended. The power scale test shows us how the engraving performance is affected at different speeds. The interval test is especially good for determining if the machine has a square or rectangular laser spot shape as it progressively increases the distance between each engraved line when scanning horizontally and vertically. The photo engraving test is there to see how much detail you can get when engraving a photo. I had to temporarily tape over the sensor to prevent this from happening. But luckily with the help of limit switches, I could calibrate home position again and continue the work. The results are good. The laser diode shows a bit less output power than the Sculptfun S9. You can compare the results of all the machines I have tested on my website hobbylasercutters.com. Link in the video description below. Next, 
I engraved the test pattern on black anodized aluminum. Let's see the details with a microscope. This test showcases the engraving precision, laser dot size and shape, and overall laser output power. The main feature of this test is the interval test in vertical and horizontal direction to further evaluate the laser spot shape, as the engraving on anodized aluminum comes out very crisp and detailed, and therefore it is easy to clearly identify the laser spot shape. The next test on the list is the focus distance test. I start by placing three 3mm acrylic sheets on the laser bed and place the wood board on top. Then, I focus the laser optimally and engrave the text and the first square with 0mm written in it. 0mm is the optimal focus. Then, I keep removing the 3mm sheets one by one without readjusting the focus to see how the laser beam shape looks further away from the optimal focus. We can see that the laser spot of the Orter becomes bigger much sooner than with the Sculpt on S9. This means that the machine should have more problems cutting thicker materials. And now let's see how Orter performs at cutting 3mm and 6mm poplar plywood boards. The Orter sometimes freezes when starting a program. This has never happened with other machines. I run the cutting tests at 300, 600 and 900 mm per minute, both in horizontal and vertical cutting direction. I will not include clips of all the cutting tests in this video, but on my new website hobbylasercutters.com you will find detailed images and results of all the tests I did. And here are the results together with the Sculptfun S9. If you are interested, pause the screen to read the table or visit the website for more data. Orter has cut the 3mm black acrylic in 9 passes at 600mm per minute which is about the average. Next, I tried engraving some text and a photo at full speed of 10,000mm per minute. The machine struggled and was slowing down when engraving a photo. I tried it again with 5000 mm per minute and it was working much better. Despite setting the full laser power the engraving was too light. I can say that the maximum practically usable speed is the same as other machines which can handle up to 6000 mm per minute. The image came out very nice and detailed. Then, I tried cutting 10mm thick poplar plywood. At 600mm per minute and 50 passes, Orter did not manage to cut through the board, despite setting the laser head 5mm lower than the optimal focus which is the recommended practice for cutting thicker stuff. I tried the same test with Sculptfun S9 with the focus point also lowered by 5mm, and it cut through in half the passes effortlessly. Lastly, I tried engraving the stainless steel that I blackened with a black spray paint. I used a very slow speed of 100mm per minute.
The order's engraving is not very good. Compared to the Mrs. Bark engraving, which was previously done with Sculptfun S9 in my other video, the order's engraving is not as dark. Tell me in the comments which machine do you prefer? You can find a purchase link for both machines in the video description. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.